العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله My dear viewers of Madam Channel Welcome to another episode of series Self Reformation Today, inshaAllah, we'll be talking about well-mannered individuals. But before, let's listen to the blessings of Durud-e Pak. The greatest Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said, Whoever recites salat upon me 100 times in the night and day of Friday, Allah azza wa jal will fulfill 100 of his needs, 70 of the hereafter and 30 of the world. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. My dear Yusuf Madani channel, our beautiful religion Islam teaches us to respect blessed personalities, sacred places, and sacred things. It does not stop at respecting blessed personalities, places. Rather, Islam teaches us to respect every individual that is older than us and treat with love every individual that is younger than us. My dear Yusuf Madani channel, Islam also teaches us to stay away from disrespect and disrespectful people. There was a time when Muslims used to respect each other. They used to be well-mannered, respectful, modest, and practicing of sunnah. Children did not use to look in the face of their parents, and nor did students and disciples, meaning murid, to their teachers and spiritual leaders. But rather, they would feel hesitant to come in front of them. They would keep their eyes lowered, voices down, and obey them. They would respect them not only in their presence, but also in their absence. They did not call their elders by name, but rather by good titles and respect. They would maintain the respect of everyone's rank and take great care of respect of the elder and the younger. Not only this, but also blessed Anbiya Ikram alayhi salatu wasalam, pious saints, masajids, shrine, the Holy Quran, book, writings and the things which are associated with Allah loving people were respected and revered a lot. But alas, nowadays, majority of us have become deprived of these ethics and manners. That's why disrespect and bad manners have become very widespread. There's a lack of respect and reverence for not only parents, teachers and spiritual guides, but also for sacred personalities. Perhaps due to these disrespect and bad manners, we are getting deprived of happiness, progress, and the hereafter benefits and blessings. My dear Yusuf Madani channel, it is said that whoever attains anything, attains it through respect, and whoever loses anything, loses it due to respect. In other words, you may have heard this cliche, ba adab ba nasib, be adab bad nasib. My dear Yusuf Madani channel, respect and good manners can make a person climb through statuses not only of this world but of the hereafter as well. It is very popular. Well-mannered is fortunate and ill-mannered is unfortunate. One day, the great leader of spiritual chain of Silsila Aliya Naqshbandiya, Sayyidina Mujaddid Al-Fisani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala saw a big clay bowl in the toilet. Upon seeing this, he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala became restless because the word Allah was engraved on that bowl. Straight away, he rahmatullahi ta'ala picked up that bowl and asked his servant to fetch a bucket of water and washed it thoroughly with his own blessed hands and purified it. Then he rahmatullahi ta'ala wrapped it in a white cloth and placed it on a high place with respect. One day, he rahmatullahi ta'ala received an indication. Allah Azza wa instilled his thought in his heart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way you have showed respect for my name, I will also dignify your name in this world and the hereafter. 
He rahmatullahi ta'ala used to say, the rank and status I attained by virtue of respecting the blessed name of Allah Azza wa could not be attained even after the worship and spiritual exercises of 100 years. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers of Madani channel, we've heard Sayyidina Mujaddid Al-Fisani rahmatullahi ta'ala attained such a great status by virtue of the blessings of respecting the blessed name of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he himself stated that I attained the status which could not be attained by the worship and spiritual exercises of 100 years. We should also respect every type of writing in general, and in particular, the blessed name of Allah Azza wa Jal, the name of blessed personality or anything that is associated with them. If we find them lying on the floor or at any unsuitable place, then we should pick them up and clean them and should keep at a place of respect. If possible, we should fix a place in our home offices, masajid, and madaris, and streets where we can keep sacred pages and worn out writings and should make proper arrangement from time to time to bury them. Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza, Karramallahu ta'ala wajhahul kareem has narrated that the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam stated, whoever picks up such a piece of paper from the ground on which any name from the names of Allah azza wa is written, Allah azza wa will raise the name of that person in illiyin that is the greatest place of souls. Allahu Akbar. So my dear viewers of Madani channel, so respect every sacred writing, piece of paper and newspaper and try avoid disrespecting it. Alas, nowadays, in addition to newspapers and other written pieces of paper which contain sacred words are also found lying everywhere on the road and are disrespected in different ways. A legendary and leading scholar of Shari and Tariqa, our Lama Maulana Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali Azmi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala has stated, if anything is written on bedding or prayer mat, it is not permissible to use it regardless of whether the words are printed or embroidered or written from ink. The same ruling would apply even if letters are written separately, as letters written separately also need to be respected. Writing is often seen on dining mats. This sort of dining mat should not be used nor should food be served on it. Couplets are written on some people's pillows which should not be used either. Invising to respect Amir Ahl Sunnah, the founder of Dawat Islami, Maulana Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri Razavi Ziyai Damat Barakatul Aliya has said, such doormats on which something is written in letters of alphabet should not be kept outside the door. Similarly, if the slipper has company name on it, it should be erased before it can be used. If there's a label bearing the name of the manufacturing company in Arabic alphabet on a prayer mat, plastic carpet, a thick cotton filled quilt, towel, etc. So the label should be removed and kept somewhere respectfully. In any case, whether it's a carpet or a rug or a pillow, anything one sits on, places his foot on, should contain no writing in any language, nor should any printed labels be attached to it. So if you find somewhere written something, keeping in mind that it's respect, do not sit on it, nor place your foot on it. One of the good example is when you cross the road or when you walk on the road, especially in Western countries, there are alphabets written on the floor. There are alphabets written on the road. So when you're actually walking on the road, avoid walking on that area to be respectful. My dear viewers of Madani channel, it is very easy for me to talk about it. It is very easy for the viewers of Madani channel to listen about it, but it is very difficult to act upon it. Let's listen to the blessed stories of our pious predecessors and how they used to respect. Before repenting his sin, Sayyidina Bishar Hafi rahmatullahi ta'ala was an alcoholic. He rahmatullahi ta'ala was once going somewhere in a drunken state. On the way, he saw a piece of paper having Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim written on it. He picked it up respectfully. He then bought some fragrance which he applied to the paper and then placed it at a high place respectfully. That night, a saint had a dream in which he heard someone say, Go and tell Bishr that he made my name fragrant, honored it, and placed it at a high place. I will also purify him. After the saint woke up, he thought to himself, Bishr is an alcoholic. There is perhaps some misunderstanding on my part about the dream. Then making wudu and offering nafal salah, he went to sleep again. He had the same dream the second time and the third time with the same instructions. That is, my message is indeed for Bishr. Go and convey my message to him. Therefore, the saint went out to look for Sayyidina Bishr rahmatullahi ta'ala and he learned that Bishr was in the gathering of alcoholics. Reaching the gathering, he called out Bishr. He was told by people that Bishr was in a drunken state. The saint said to people, go and somehow tell him that a man with a message for him is standing outside. Someone went inside and informed him about this. Sayyidina Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi ta'ala said, 
ask him as to whose message he has brought. When asked, the saint replied, I have brought the message of Allah Azza wa Jal. When he informed this, Sayyidina Bishr Hafi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala was overwhelmed and immediately came out barefooted. Hearing the divine message, he sincerely repented from his sins and attained such a high spiritual rank that he began to remain barefooted due to the extreme level of witnessing divine omnipotence. That is why he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala became famously known as Hafi, meaning the one who remains barefoot. My dear viewers of Madani channel, we've heard that how great of a reward was bestowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the individual who respected a piece of paper on which the blessed name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was written on it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him so much reward that an alcoholic became a pious saint of Allah azza wa He rahmatullahi ta'ala attained such a great status that as long as he lived in the world, Animals did not defecate on the pathways out of respect and reverence. It has been narrated that Sayyidina Bishr Hafi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala would always walk barefooted. As long as he was alive in Baghdad, no animal defecated on the pathways of the city out of respect and reverence so that Sayyidina Bishr Hafi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala would not face any trouble when walking barefoot. One day, an animal defecated on a pathway. His owner became worried, fearing that Sayyidina Bishr Hafi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala perhaps passed away, or else the animal would never defecate on the path. After a short while, he heard that the great saint had departed this life. My dear viewers of Madani channel, blessed Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam are superior to all in the creation. It is necessary to respect and revere them, even a very little disrespect or falsifying any of them is kufr. Allama Maulana Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali Azmi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala has said, a little insult or disbelieving any Nabi is kufr. Disrespect for blessed Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam brings about disgrace and insult and destroys all good deeds. When shaitan disrespected the Nabi of Allah Azza wa Jal, Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, he was kicked out of the court of Allah Azza wa Jal after being disgraced and humiliated. Though prior to this, shaitan was not disloyal and disobedient, but rather he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for thousands of years. He was a jinn, and due to his worship and spiritual exercises and knowledge, he became Mu'allamul Malakut, the teacher of the angels. He was so dear that he would go to the court of Allah azza wa jal with the angels. But due to disobedience to the commandment of Allah azza wa jal, and by insulting the Nabi of Sayyidina Adam ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu wa salam, he destroyed his years of acts of worship and awful humiliation and disgrace have become his destiny. He has become the accursed forever and become deserving of the eternal punishment of Jahannam. Therefore, keeping in mind the condition of shaitan, we should never disrespect any of the Anbiya Ikram alayhi salatu wasalam and nor should have the company of the blasphemers. We should always keep in mind that the blessed Anbiya Ikram alayhi salatu wasalam are very highly respectable. At many places of the Holy Quran, Allah Azza wa has stated the respect of blessed Anbiya Kiram alayhi salatu wasalam. Those who act upon this commandment have been given the glad tiding of forgiveness from sins and entry into paradise. In chapter 6, verse 12 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, it is stated, translation from Kanzul Iman, and believe in my messengers and respect them and lend Allah a good loan. I will surely wipe out your sins and I will surely admit you to gardens beneath which rivers flow. Having love, devotion, respect, and reverence for Anbiya Ikram alayhi salatu wasalam are not only the signs of a true believer, faith, and the source of forgiveness for their sins, but also a source through which many unbelievers attain the wealth of faith. When Sayyidina Musa Kalimullah ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wasalam went to Pharaoh to invite to Islam by the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal, so instead of believing in him, Sayyidina Musa Kalimullah ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wasalam after seeing his prophetic miracles, he gathered his magicians of his kingdom to defeat Sayyidina Musa ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wasalam. When the contest began, these magicians said to Sayyidina Musa ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wasalam, O Musa, either you throw your staff or we throw our magic sticks and rope. They said this out of respect of Sayyidina Musa ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wasalam as they did not begin their act without his permission. Sayyidina Musa ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wasalam said, you throw first. When they threw their things such as big ropes and sticks on the ground, they started appearing to be pythons and the ground appeared to be full of them. Meanwhile, with the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam placed his blessed staff on the ground. 
The blessed staff turned into a big horrifying python that swallowed all of the magic spells of the magicians one by one. When Sayyidina Musa ala Nabina wa salatu salam picked it up, it turned to the staff as before. Upon witnessing this prophetic miracle, all of the magicians were impressed so much that they fell into sajda and proclaimed, Amanna bi Rabbil Alameen. That is, we believe in him who is the Lord of all the worlds. Magicians respected Sayyidina Musa ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam and regarded him as an important individual and did not begin their act without his permission. So the reward for this respect and reverence they attained was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with the wealth of Iman and guidance. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, we've heard that by virtue of the blessing of respecting Sayyidina Musa ala Nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam, the magicians, the unbelievers were blessed with the wealth of faith, with the wealth of Iman. Just think how greatly a person can be blessed and favored if he respects the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It is mentioned on page 61, the fourth volume of the book, Allah Walum Ki Baate, a publication of Maktabatul Madina, the publishing department of Dawat Islami. Sayyidina Wahab bin Munabbi, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, has said, there was a man in Bani Israel named Masta, who spent 200 years of his life in disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. When he died, the people of Bani Israel dragged his dead body, holding it from the leg, and threw it in the garbage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a revelation to Sayyidina Musa Kalimullah ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam to go and offer the funeral salah of that person. Sayyidina Musa ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam humbly said, Ya Allah azza wa jal, people of Bani Israel say that he disobeyed you for 200 years. Allah azza wa jal said to Sayyidina Musa ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam, certainly he was a bad person, but whenever he would open the holy Torah to recite it and would see the blessed name of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he would kiss it, touch it to his eyes and would recite salat upon him. Therefore, I have accepted this deed of his, forgiving his sins and got his nikah performed to 70 whores of paradise. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers of Madani channel, we've heard a sinful person of Bani Israel was forgiven because he would touch the blessed name of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to his eyes, kiss it, and would recite durood upon the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He would see it in Torah, just wonder when an ummati, a follower of Sayyidina Musa ala nabina alayhi salatu wa salam, deserves to be forgiven by virtue of respecting the blessed name of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. How much mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal would be upon the person of Ummati Muhammadiyah, who not only has respect for the blessed name, but also has great respect for everything that is related to the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. Furthermore, it is that esteemed court about which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Himself commanded. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Chapter 9, Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 157, Translation from Kanzun Iman. So those who believe in him and revere him and help him and follow the light which came down with him, it is they who have succeeded. Similarly, at another place, teaching Muslims the manners of the blessed court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited them to adopt common names in the great court. In ayah 63 of Surah An-Nur chapter 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, translation from Kanzun Iman, do not presume amongst yourself the calling of the noble Rasul equal to your calling one another. Sadul Afazir, Allama Maulana, Sayyid Mufti Muhammad Naimuddin Murad Abadi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala has stated, commentators have mentioned one meaning of this ayah. Whenever, if someone wants to call out to the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Ali wa Wasallam, he should call out in a beautiful manner with great respect and reverence by using his exalted titles like Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Rasul Allah, Ya Habib Allah in a soft voice and humble tone. Imam al-Mufassirin Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu has said, First, the blessed companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum would call the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Ya Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Ya Abul Qasim sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited calling his Nabi in the normal manner, then the blessed companions would say, Ya Nabi Allah. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. My dear Yusuf Madani channel, think how important is the respect and reverence of the beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like anyone 
to call out his beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam by name. It is stated in Fatawa Razaviya that Islamic scholars have said that to call out the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam by name is haram. Remember, the respect for the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was not only limited to his blessed apparent life, but it is also extremely necessary for every Muslim to accept his glory and greatness and consider it compulsory to pay him respect, no matter what part of the world he is in. Sayyidina Allama Ismail Haqi rahmatullahi ta'ala has said, reverence and respect for the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was compulsory and necessary for the ummah during the apparent life of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and also after his apparent demise because the more respect for the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam increases in the hearts, the more the nur, meaning the light of faith, will continue to increase. My dear viewers of Madani channel, in addition to the respect and reverence for blessed Anbiya Ikram alayhim salatu wasalam, we should also take great care of the respect and reverence of Islamic scholars. Remember, Islamic scholars are successors of Anbiya because these personalities gain the legacy of blessed Anbiya, that is Islamic knowledge, and guide people through it. It is stated in the blessed hadith, Verily, the Islamic scholars on the earth are like the stars through which guidance is sought in the darkness of the universe. But unfortunately, nowadays, according to the cunning plan, the Muslim Ummah is being misguided about Islamic scholars. People are moving away from Islamic scholars. Their status and ranks are being dispelled from the minds of the people. They're being insulted, objected and criticized, or rather nowadays, they are being disgraced and hated, which will lead to the loss of faith. The one who is rude towards Islamic scholar will get deprived of their company and blessings. When a person is not blessed with both these things, it will be difficult for him to receive proper and correct Shari guidance. My dear viewers of Madani channel, think seriously. These sacred personalities teach us the meaning and sense of Quran and Ahadith, acts of worship like Salah, Psalm, Hajj, Zakat, etc. Tell us the solution to the mistake that we make in our worships. Tell us about the respect and reverence for parents rights of relatives and common Muslims. They give us information about the rulings on shrouding and burial and guide us about how to divide the legacy of a deceased person. These blessed personalities settle differences between husband and wife. They resolve our business complication and help us in countless stages of the world. So, should we risk our hereafter by taunting and criticizing them instead of thanking and respecting them? Of course not. The answer is no. We should be grateful to them, obey them in shari ruling, and to respect and revere them. Our pious predecessors would show great respect and reverence towards Islamic scholars. Sayyidina Sufyan rahmatullahi ta'ala has said, when an Islamic scholar would come to Sayyidina Amr bin Qais rahmatullahi ta'ala he rahmatullahi ta'ala would sit in kneeling position out of respect. Sayyidina Allama Ismail Haqi rahmatullahi ta'ala has said, remember, Islamic scholars are the successors of blessed Anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam, and they have gained their knowledge from the knowledge of blessed Anbiya. So as the practicing Islamic scholars are the successors of the deeds and knowledge of blessed Anbiya and Mursaleen alayhim salatu wasalam, similarly, those who make fun of Islamic scholars are the successor of Abu Jahl, Uqba bin Abi Mu'id, and unbelievers like them regarding making fun of Islamic scholars. My dear viewers of Mandi Channel, we don't want to be the successor of Abu Jahl and Uqba bin Abu Mu'id. We want to be the one who respects the scholars because they are the successors of Anbiya Ikram alayhi wa salatu wasalam, because they have the knowledge of Islam, the knowledge of deen. Subhanallah, my dear viewers of Mandi Channel, this is the blessed teaching of Islam. Shaykh Tariqat Amir and his sunnah, Damud Barakatum al Aliyah, strongly advises his disciple and well wishes to respect and revert Islamic scholars. Talking about the status and rank of Islamic scholars and giving the mindset of respecting them, he said, in Islam, the true Islamic scholars are held in high esteem and are superior to general people by virtue of their Islamic knowledge. An Islamic scholar gets more reward for worship compared to a non-scholar. Sayyidina Muhammad bin Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhumah has narrated, two rakat salah offered by an Islamic scholar are better than 70 rakat offered by a non-scholar. My dear viewers of Madani channel, nowadays our condition is getting worse. We offer our salah behind an imam and as soon as we get out of the masjid, we start backbiting the same imam. We soon, as soon as we get out of the masjid, we start backbiting the same scholar behind whom we have read our salah. Remember, Sayyidina Abu al-Hafs Kabir rahmatullahi ta'ala has stated, 
one who backbites against an Islamic scholar on the day of judgment, it will be written on his face, he is disappointed from the mercy of Allah. Sayyidina Abu Dhul Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala no has narrated, an Islamic scholar is a sign and evidence of Allah on the earth. So whoever finds fault within an Islamic scholar will be ruined. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the respect and reverence towards Islamic scholar and save us from the evil of disrespecting them. Ameen bijahin nabeel, ameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madani channel, along with people, we should also respect the books, the holy books of Islam as well. People have a lot of respect for the holy Quran, even in this sinful era. But remember, it is not sufficient to have respect for the holy Quran only in the heart, but it is also necessary to show apparent respect. Unfortunately, due to lack of Islamic knowledge, a large number of people do not take care of the apparent manners, nor do they have any awareness of them. However, being a Muslim, we should learn the manners of reciting the Holy Quran and must take care of them so that we can protect ourselves from even committing a minor sin of disrespect. It is stated in the Dalil al-Arifin, there was a sinful young man whom Muslims used to hate due to his evil acts. They used to forbid him a lot, but he did not pay any attention to them. In short, when he died, someone had a dream in which he saw that he was going along with the angels wearing a crown. He was asked, you are a sinner. Then how did you get this wealth? He replied, I performed one good deed in the world. And that is, whenever my eyes fell on the Holy Quran, I would stand up and see it respectfully. By virtue of it, Allah Azzawajal has forgiven me and granted me this status. My dear viewers of Allah channel, develop dignity of the Quran in your heart and have great respect and reverence for it. Perhaps this deed will get accepted in the court of Allah Azzawajal and become the cause of our forgiveness. The greatest respect of Holy Quran that is extremely wajib for every Muslim is not to touch it without purity and cleanliness. When not in the state of wudu, that is ritual ablution, it is fud to perform wudu in order to touch the Holy Quran. Without wudu, it is haram for a person to touch the Holy Quran or any ayah of the Holy Quran. However, there is no harm if the Holy Quran is recited without touching but by looking. It is haram for a person upon whom ghusl is fud to touch the Holy Quran. This includes the margins, the cover, the cloth of the Holy Quran. Similarly, it is also haram to recite the Holy Quran by looking at or from memory, to write an ayah of ta'weez, to touch such a ta'weez, or touch wearing, or wearing such a ring which has Quranic ayahs inscribed on it while ghusl is fud upon it. It is not permissible to wear these things. Whenever you are privileged to recite the Holy Quran, Kiss it with extreme respect and reverence, and also embrace it in order to attain blessings. Amir al Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, used to kiss the Holy Quran in the morning every day and would say, This is Ahad covenant of my Rabb and his book, Allahu Akbar. It is mustahab to recite the Holy Quran in the state of wudu, facing qibla, wearing nice clothes. For the recitation of the Holy Quran, one should thoroughly wash his mouth properly with miswaq. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu has stated, Indeed, your mouths are ways for the Holy Qur'an, that is a source of reciting the Holy Qur'an. Purify them with misfaq. It is mustahab to recite ta'awuth, meaning a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, when beginning the recitation. And it is sunnah to recite tasmiyyah, meaning bismillah, at the start of the surah, otherwise it is mustahab. It is impermissible to recite the Holy Qur'an in the bathroom or in places of impurity. The manners of the Holy Quran also include that one should refrain from turning his back towards it, spreading out legs toward it, placing feet higher than it, or being on a higher surface as compared to it. It is a respect for the Holy Quran to keep it in a case or in a cover. The Muslims have been practicing it since the time of Sahaba and Tabaeen. If someone keeps the Holy Quran in the house with the intention of blessings and goodness, but he does not recite it, he will not be sinful. In fact, even this intention of his will be a means of reward for him. If possible, attain blessing by seeing it every day, as seeing it is also an act of worship. The beloved Rasul has said, The portion of worship that is for your eyes should be given to the eyes. The blessed companions عنهم, humbly asked, What is the portion of eyes in worship? It was replied, To see Holy Quran, to ponder in it, and to get a lesson from its wonders. Nothing should be placed on top of Holy Quran. Even a piece of cloth should not be placed on top of the case in which the Holy Quran has been kept. 
my dear viewers of Mandi Channel, these are the few things that can be discussed. But Islam puts a lot of emphasis on respect. There are many things that we still need to learn on how to respect our elders, how to respect our parents, how to respect our siblings, how to respect our elder brother, how to respect our elder sister. Respect in Islam is very important. So then Abu Ali Daqaq rahmatullahi ta'ala has said, a bondman reaches paradise through obedience and reaches Allah through respecting divine obedience. So then Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullahi ta'ala has said, in comparison to acquiring more knowledge, we need to acquire a little respect. Sayyidina so Data Ali Hajwiri rahmatullahi ta'ala has said, the attraction of worldly and the hereafter affairs is respect and creations need respect at every place. In Fatawa Razaviya, Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala has said, the one who is not respectful has no religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us one of those who is respectful May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from those who are disrespectful and save us from their company as well. Ameen. Bijahil Nabi. Ameen. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah, reform my heart. Take my hand, God.